What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be talking about the COT reports. And if you don't know what the COT reports are, they are a very, very important piece of information that us retail traders can actually use to sort of peer into or look into what the big traders or the big players in the markets are actually up to. So in this video, if you stick around, I'm going to show you guys how you can view the COT reports, what they mean, and how you could actually potentially use them in your trading. So stay tuned. Let's get into it. Okay, so COT report stands for Commitment of Traders Report, and this is basically a weekly uh, document or sort of release of data that has to do with all of the big players in the United States. It's basically a futures-based thing where uh, they have to, actually, you know what? We've got a definition for a reason. So. According to Invest Investopedia, Commitment to Traders Report is a weekly publication that shows the aggregate holdings of different participants in the U.S. futures market. It's pretty much just a summary of what traders are up to, and this is something required by uh, the CFTC. So it is um, sort of a document that we as traders have the ability to look at. So what does it actually look like and what sort of information can we do? Well, this link that you're seeing on the screen right now, you can actually click it down below and there will be a way for you to take a look at the COT reports on our website. We have everything linked for you just to check it out. Um, and before I get too far into the video, if you are newer to COT reports and you want to see some break in, broken down analysis in real time, we do a lot of that on our newsletter, which is completely free. All you got to do is come right here, type in your email address and sign up for free, and then you'll get emails from us about the latest COT reports. Anyways, let's take a look at one, for example, without, you know, uh, I think the best way to look at it is just to jump into one, for example. So this is actually another site that we've linked that we found that was super helpful in looking at this. And this is going to give you sort of a view. I like to scroll down. And what I do personally is I turn off the commercial and the non-reportable. Now, let me talk about what each one of these is for a second. The commercials um, are basically like they are like businesses uh, that do some sort of trading on the futures market to hedge themselves uh, into a position. These are not the ones that I'm super interested in taking a look at myself because a lot of times when you're looking at uh, a commercial institution, let's say, for example, that you're a farmer, right? And you, you farm corn, right? The futures market in one of its ways or its designs uh, is to allow people who create corn for a living, right? Farmers to hedge their positions so that the price fluctuations of corn don't hurt their business, right? If you produce corn, but the price of corn goes down for, you know, two years straight and you're just sitting there with inventory that's devaluing, it's going to be really bad for your livelihood, right? Well, commercial hedgers, basically, they hedge their position in a way so that if corn is going up, they're shorting it. If corn is going down, they're buying it to hedge the price of corn so that their inventory that they're producing on their farm doesn't destroy them. It's a little bit of a long answer, but the basic idea is that these people are not speculating on the price, future price of something like this. They are hedging their current position uh, based on what they produce, right? The ones, the other, the one that I'm most interested in is going to go ahead and be this middle one, which is the non-commercials. These are going to be your hedge funds, your leverage funds, your institutional traders that are actually trying to speculate on the future price of a market. Okay, and so when we look at the U.S. dollar, we are looking at uh, again. Scroll up to the top. You can see this is basically what the uh, the COT reports sort of show us, and this is again the one that I'm most interested in, the non-commercials. So you can see that there are. 26,679 contracts open on uh, the long side and 20,000 open, 20,000 so, 21,000 on the short side. And you can see that there, uh, you know, is all this sort of different information on also the, the commercial, the non-reportable, et cetera. So um, again, I won't go into exact detail with everything, but I'm gonna try and give you guys just an overview of what this is. So what we can see is at a glance, it seems that the latest data shows us that non-commercial overall on the US dollar is about 56% long and about 43% uh, short, okay? So um, when we go down here, what you can see is this is actually the price of the DXY or the, the US dollar futures. And you can kind of see that relative to that, uh, what the, the actual positions have been looking like. So let's look at 2021. So according to 2021, the US dollar here, again, we're looking at the US dollar index, seems to be uh, in a pretty strong demand or buildup of, of uh, positioning. So you can see that over time, the positioning here has actually increased 
increased on the US dollar. So um, why, why, why would this be useful information? Well, um, this is actually sort of key stuff because this is telling us what institutional traders, what big money is sort of projecting or, or predicting for the US dollar. Uh, there's only, you know, there's a lot of reasons why you might close out of a position, but there's usually only one reason why you would open a position. It's because you probably think the price is going up, uh, I guess, arguably, or you're hedging. But most likely, if you are just taking a position, if you're buying something, it's because you think it's going up. So you can see that there were a lot of institutional traders that were building up a position. Then we saw the the strong rise recently at the time making this US, uh, uh, in this video that the US dollar has done well for itself. So, um, you know, that's one situation in which we sort of, uh, we see that happening. So let's go look at some other ones just for the example. So we'll go back to the website again and we'll pull this up for you guys. So let's say for example, a really hot topic right now is taking a look at the futures for gold. So we can actually go into the gold market, click on this one and do the exact same procedure. We can scroll down, take a look and see that right now there seems to be on the non-commercial side of things, a pretty hefty holding of long positions on gold. Now we could scroll down again. I'm going to repeat the process, make this a little bit easier to see and just say, bam, there's the non-commercials. So again, non-commercials here seem to have been in a sort of sell pressure zone. Uh, or sell pressure mood when it comes to 2021 on gold. So a lot of selling on the gold market. Now we did recently, I've talked about this on my streams recently, for those of you guys who've been hanging out with me live, um, we've been doing, or we've been seeing gold sort of catch a little bit of a bounce here on the, uh, the recent sort of week. So you can see a nice increase there in uh, early April there. Now, since then, there's been a little bit of a decline, but this is again, the idea. So what I'm looking for is I like to get the big picture view as to what the trend seems to be on the COT reports. What is institutional money doing with a certain currency or commodity? If they're in a sell uh, trend, if, if the the inventory continues to sell off and people continue to short or sell a particular asset, I'm probably going to be looking to go with that momentum um, rather than trying to fight it. Because again, we're talking about the big money. We're talking about smart, you know, PhD level institutional traders uh, and what they usually are looking at. They, a lot of times they're very right about what they're doing. Not always. And this is not some sort of all knowing indicator that's going to tell you exactly what the market will do every time. Uh, it is lagging. I should also say that one thing you need to know is that we get uh, Tuesday's data on Fridays. Okay, so I'll say that again. So we get in COT report, when you get see these newest data points, this is Tuesday's data delivered on a Friday. So this data on a Friday that we get out on Friday is actually the latest data as of Tuesday of that same week. The reason that's impactful is because it's a little bit lagging. And, and this indicator by no means is going to tell you exactly what the future price is going to do, but it gives you an idea, and that's why I use it, an idea as to what uh, the overall sentiment by big money on the higher time frames looks like. The COT reports are not going to be super helpful on the lower time frames, in my opinion. They're mostly going to be better for those big picture trends when you're looking at the daily chart, the weekly chart. When you're looking at those bigger moves, COT report absolutely can be a helpful piece of information. We can keep going down the line. For example, if I want to go look back on uh, the COT report, let's say I want to take a look at the pound, for example. Um, which I'm actually curious about. So we'll take a look at the pound, scroll down here and take a look and see. You can see a lot of bullish pressure, almost 66% there long on the non-commercial. Again, repeat the process. And we can see that it seems like there is a nice steady buying of the pound going on. Uh, and that seems like a pretty healthy uptrend in terms of uh, demand for the pound by smart traders, re uh, institutional traders. So the cool thing here is that the big money, when it is flowing in a particular asset or security, it gives me an extra level of confirmation as to which way I might want to trade a particular uh, currency or commodity. The last thing I'm going to say also is that we can take a look at these, um, you know, once we have an idea of what uh, maybe we're looking to, to trade. For example, we could take a look at GBP, JPY and say that, well, there seems to be a strong buying presence on the pound. So maybe I want to be bullish overall on the pound. However, you might want to take a look in context uh, to take a look at the yen as well, right? Because when we're trading currency pairs, you know, the futures report shows you what one currency do, does, but it's nice to know what the other one is doing. So maybe we can go take a look at 
the Japanese yen and see what's going on here. I just know from what I've looked at uh, recently, it's been pretty bearish. So we can actually take a look here and take a look I'll take those off there and bam, um, there's our, our Japanese yen in sort of a sell trend. These two things combined, knowing that there's an increasing demand for the pound and a decreasing demand or a uh, more selling on the yen, that can give me a general bias to the upside on the pound yen. Now, this is just one way that I like to take a look at markets and, and, and get an idea of my overall bias. But again, using the CO2 reports helps to sort of clarify what uh, big money is up to, what the institutional traders uh, sort of are projecting for uh, some of these larger currency pairs. I hope that helps. If it was helpful to you, like I said, make sure to check the link down below in the description. Bookmark that so you can use it in the future. And hey, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like it down below and subscribe to the channel for more free stuff in the future. Thanks so much. We'll see you back next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to like the video down below because if you don't, you're statistically 84.72% more likely to blow an account in the next 48 hours. Don't ask me how, don't ask me why, that's just facts. If you enjoyed that video and you wanna see more free content here on YouTube, I'll be popping up some videos on the screen now. Go ahead and click anything that looks interesting to you and thank you so much for supporting the channel.